Welcome back to the channel. We are going to be doing more of the solar stuff today. Um, so this is an important step here. Like I'm waiting for a few things to come in the mail from Amazon um, to do the install. First tip right here is if you ever, if you're planning on being legal, um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to pretend to know your situation or anything like that, but if you want to be legal, everything you buy needs to be UL listed. As for the batteries, um, I have six of them. I don't know your situation, but I have six of the 48 volt, 100 amp hour batteries, and you need to charge each one individually to a hundred percent for, um, for maximum longevity of the cells. All right. So you want them all for me, all six of them at a hundred percent. So whenever I flip the switch over there and we start running off the solar, they're on a, a level playing field state of charge wise. Anyway, um, so let me show you how I'm getting that done because I don't have any of the stuff set up down there by the house yet. Um, but I did have these solar panels here. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the solar panels that we had hooked up last year to our fifth wheel that was running the, the EG4 mini split. Um, so I just ran the cables in the back. I've got one of the 6,000 XP inverters and one of the batteries. And I'm just going to leave the inverter here. And once the, each battery gets to 100%, take it, put it up, and go get another one. Rinse and repeat until all six batteries are fully charged up. So, I mean, it's real easy. I, I mean, you're going to have to do this eventually when it's on the wall and whatnot. But, you know, you got your positive and negative from your battery. And then you got your positive and negative from the PV. And your communications cable that goes over to the battery. Communications goes uh, in the can right here. Um, it will not charge the battery if you don't have this cable in here, okay? <laughs> uh, I figured that out last night and I was trying to uh, get it sorted. Anyway, um, so she's charging, uh, getting about 11 amps in right now. But uh, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna rinse and repeat until all six cells are completely 100% charged and we'll be good to go. Now let's fast forward and get down there to our box truck and I can start talking about that stuff. Okay, so here's the box truck. I'm sorry if there's gonna be an echo from this thing, but um, so the box truck in relation to the house, the house is right there and that's the power pole that we will be running our four gauge, four conductor cable to the box truck, all the solar in the box truck. All right, um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount everything on this back wall. I went ahead and just screwed this one in. I'm gonna put some more screws in it. I just put, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six on that side, six on that side. Um, I've got that sheet over there because I'm about to measure this and I'm gonna leave me about inch and a half gap or so on that side. Um, so I can get the other panel mounted up flush. I'll probably put another set of screws down the middle on where those boards are just to make it nice and secure. And I'll, I'll, I'll test it, um, pull on it a little bit and see, uh, see how well it's up there. But, uh, anyways, so that's where we're at. Let me get that done and I'll be back. All right. Well, we got the wall up there and it is nice and sturdy. Like I can't move that thing anyway. So. Your inverter is gonna come with this template to give you an idea of like how it's gonna sit on the wall. And if you guessed that that little hole there is to tell you where the viewing window on your inverter is, that's exactly what it is. So you can get an idea, like you don't want it up here because <laughs> then you can't see the screen. So you want it somewhere eye level, right? Um, so we got this and then I'm also, I've got, the battery box here. I'm going to put the wheels. There they are. Put the wheels on that. And I think it's going to go over there. I don't know yet, but let me get the wheels on it and uh, I'll be back. All right. We're going to see if we can get it this time. Now, this is about the fourth time I've tried this. Um, so this is the little template that I drew up in the house out of my brain. Um, obviously it's not going to be exactly like this. Um, but so I started drawing up on the wall with a marker and I think this is about where I want things. Okay. Um, so we'll start with inverter one, um, inverter one, 
the power cable from inverter one to the sub panel will be a 8.4 SOOW cable. Um, the battery wire uh, cables will come inside here, okay. Um, from the sub panel down, I'm gonna have a 120 volt uh, 20 amp plug here so that I can have a temperature activated uh, plug for a uh, heating lamp for the winter. Um, from the sub panel to the power pole to power the house will be a four gauge four conductor cable. Um, and let's see, inverter two will have a uh, eight gauge four conductor power coming all the way across. You can kind of see the dotted line and jump over right here and come into the sub panel. So both inverters powering sub panel. The PV from inverter one, PV connections over here, right here on the right hand side, but it'll go across and meet up with the PV on this side and come out the side. The solar is going to be on this side of the box truck. Okay. Um, for the transfer switch, I'm going to have eight gauge four conductor and one will go to generator. And then the eight four will come out, go to the other side of the wall where there'll be a reverse plug for the generator power wires into battery here um yeah battery in the middle i think this is the way i want it now i'm gonna have the inverters are higher yes i realize but i'm gonna use my uh my stepping stool to get up there and uh be able to look at the the monitors on them i just wanted extra room so i could run conduit in between the this and the inverter on the wall Okay, so if you're doing this by yourself like me, you're going to have to be a ninja. <sighs> Thing weighs about 53 pounds, so it is kind of a pain in the ass. I went and got these uh, big screws for my application here. I can't use the anchors because the three-quarter inch plywood, it's just not thick enough to get it to bite. Um, but I digress. So I used the battery um, box here plus some uh, leftover boxes of tile to get it to the level that I wanted. And uh, I put two of these in the top. Now I'm gonna put two in the bottom and uh, the inverter will be mounted. And uh, let me do that and I'll be back. And there we go. She is on the wall. Um, okay. All right, so I guess it's about time I go down there and check that, uh, that battery that's charging and might be able to swap it out and get another one going. All right, so uh, in the bag with the manual, um, there's four little screws for this Wi-Fi dongle. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get that put on the inverter. All right, we got her uh, attached there, so we're all good. All right, welcome back. So as you can see, we got a bunch of stuff in. All right, so um, first thing that I'm doing is, um, and I would probably suggest that you start doing this without your batteries in here. I feel like I might have to take one of the bottom ones out or not. Um, so what I'm trying to do is making sure that my power cables will reach where the inverters are. Um, so what I'm trying to do is on the negative bus bar side, I wanna take both of my negatives from this side and then I wanna take both of my positives from this side. So essentially right now, I got this one bolted up ran behind. I drilled my own hole in these because uh, these are one and a half inch conduit and uh, the hole for it needs to be two inches. Um, these are a little too big. I accidentally popped one out without checking it first on this side. So I'm going to have to cover that one back up because I'm just not using that size of conduit. But uh, so I got my drill bit pieces uh, and hole saws out, drilled that hole like I said, ran the wire behind. It looks, it looks like it'll fit. Um, I'm not gonna bank on it until I get the inverter on the wall, but I th I'm pretty sure that that's gonna work. Um, anyway, so right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the other negative connected down here to the stud and torqued down. Consult your owner's manual to tell you exactly what that torque value is. Um, and then I'll be connecting both of my positives right here. Um, and I will be back. 
Okay, so as you know from earlier in the video, I'm using my other inverter up there with my Jeep and that solar panel array to charge the batteries. So I can't install the positive and negative because they're up there being used. Um, but I did take this other set and I made sure that it would reach over to that inverter. If I have to, whenever it comes down to it and I bring that other inverter up here, I can always just move it over a little bit to the right. I don't really want to do that, but if that's what I got to do, that's what I got to do. Um, so let me just show you where I'm at so far. Um, like I said, as to pull from the battery evenly, the negatives are going to be pulling from the bottom. And we got one hooked up. The other one will go right here. Um, and then the positive, I got this one hooked up to the top left here. So it's diagonally across the batteries, right? And this one right here will go out to the other inverter. So I got my hole drilled. It's a two inch hole um, for the one and a half inch conduit. Um, UL listed, by the way, this conduit. Everything needs to be UL listed if you're gonna be legal. Um, ran through, connected, and I got these nuts torqued down to the value in the manual. You always follow the manual. Their manual is so good. All right, so what I'm going to do from now while I'm waiting for the batteries to get charged and I can't really run any more, I can't install the inverter, I can't do the power line or anything like that. So I'm going to mount my transfer switch 